Hi guys, thanks for joining me. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my minimalist training routine, and I wanna go on from the video that I made previously when I was talking about what minimalist training is and why I think it's perfect for beginners. So today I'm gonna to be going into my minimalist training, why I've picked certain exercises, why I've adopted this approach, what my results have been and how everything is going now. And I can then give you guys examples, whether you're doing calisthenics, whether you're doing weight training, or maybe you're combining the two. And I will be linking the video of my previous one. If you haven't seen that, I will leave it down below or you can check it out at the end of the video. I'll leave a little link to it down here at the end of the video so you can check that out too. Before we get into that though, if you're new here and interested in anything to do with calisthenics, or bodyweight fitness, hints and tips guides, workout videos, and equipment review, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified of whenever I upload. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the video. It does really help the channel grow. It doesn't cost you guys anything to subscribe or to like, but it does make a huge difference. So I'd really appreciate if you could do that. And if you have any comments or you wanna create a discussion on this topic or you are doing minimalist training yourself, share your experiences, comment down below and start interacting with other people or me today. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So I've adopted different minimalist training programs over the years, but the one that I'm doing now is the eight week strength program that you guys may have seen or you haven't seen. I have done a video, I'll leave a link to it down below or it will be at the end of the video if you prefer to check it out at the end of this one. It's a free eight week strength program that I have done previously before with uh, barbell work and I'm incorporating it now into weighted calisthenics. So at the minute I am doing that eight week program. I think I'm on week six now, I think. Yeah, I think it's uh, week six. I'm progressing through that, but I'm only doing it over three exercises and I'm doing a full body workout and it's between two and three times a week. I'm seeing how my body feels, I'm seeing what's working, seeing what's not, see how the previous session feels to the next session to whether I wanna do an extra one or take extra days, or because I am doing separate days where I'm doing sort of like cardio to a sort of, you know, maybe higher rep to power work because I've got kettlebells, I've now got an air bike, and I do a little bit of plyometric work with my box. If I do a bit of sort of like power and strength sort of cardio work, I do that as a separate day. So I incorporate them sort of maybe as a one day on, one day off. So I see how my body feels when I go from there, but usually it's around two or three times a week. So my workout consists of a weighted pull-up, a weighted dip, a trap bar deadlift. I did experiment with doing them as straight sets, meaning I'll do my sort of whatever the sets I have to do on the chosen week, because on that eight week uh, program, the intensity changes each week, the amount of reps that you do, and the amount of sets you do changes each week as you go into different phases to then go into a full eight week mesocycle, broken down into different weeks. I was doing straight sets, so I'll then do all of my pull-ups. Once I finish all my pull-ups, then go into all my dips, and then I'll then go into all my trap bar. But I found with that it was good and I was progressing well, but the sessions were taking longer than I would like. So I started to incorporate them into a giant set. So I would then do a weighted pull up into a weighted dip straight into a trap bar. And then I would rest three minutes or depending on which phase I'm in because the rest periods also change throughout that eight week strength program. I would then rest accordingly to the rep range or the intensity that I was working with. Then I would go through for the amount of sets that I needed. A very minimalist sort of style of program. It's basically a push pull legs and the trap bar, which is something I'm a very big fan of. For any of you that have been from my channel for a long time, one of my most viewed videos is my five reasons to do trap bar deadlift. So I'll leave a link to that down below. So if you guys are interested in doing that, but what I like about the deadlift is it hits the whole entire leg. It's a lot easier exercise to learn. It's been shown to be more athletic and to uh, um, increase power output compared to a traditional deadlift. It's got a lower skill level. It's safer on the back. You get a little bit more of a leg workout than you do posterior compared to a normal deadlift, but it hits the whole entire lower body, which is great. And obviously if you want to, you can use it for other exercises and you can change the height of it if you want to make it more intense. So it kind of like doing a, a deficit trap bar deadlift. So it's a very, very good exercise to do. So that's what I've been doing for that. But when it comes into sort of my cardio workout or the sort of the higher rep work where I do a little bit of basic conditioning, but I like to add in a little bit of power because it makes me feel a little bit more athletic as opposed to just going for a run or, or you know, or maybe doing some skipping out, which is good cardio and people should be doing something like that, you know, every day or every other day to make sure that they're, they're doing their heart health training. But I kind of found it was a little bit boring for me and I wanted to add in some power training to make me feel a little bit more athletic, make me feel a bit more explosive. But if you do a little bit of power work or do a little bit of explosive work it will go into sort of your strength training because the muscles that are responsible and obviously the central nervous system is recruited as well when you're doing your power training the type 2 
X and A sort of get incorporated when you do your really high power training, it will sort of transfer over into the other exercises. So in my sort of minimalist sort of cardio power sort of thing, I've now incorporated the air bikes and my air bike will be my main cardio output where I do my either long winded ones or I do my sort of Tabata or hard intense ones. And that's mainly used for getting my heart rate up, but there is that power element because you've really got to go for it and your legs are burning and your arms are burning. So that's something I'm incorporating now. I'm using kettlebells and I'm using mainly the kettlebell swing which is a fantastic exercise for any of you that have never tried it. I definitely recommend doing it. And getting a kettlebell is a good piece of equipment to have just because it's very, very versatile. It takes up very, very little room, but you can work your whole body. And one of the best ones you can do is the kettlebell swing, which is gonna develop a lot of posterior chain power and strength, which is important with calisthenics because obviously that's sort of an area where calisthenics can be quite limited. Yes, you do have bridges and, and variations of that to hit the glutes and the hamstrings, but for the lower back, it's not the best way to solely just train calisthenics for the lower back where you'll be better in getting in some sort of loaded carry, some sort of hinge movement is very, very beneficial for you. And a kettlebell swing is very, very good. It's a ballistic exercise. It's gonna develop power, it's gonna hit your lower back, it's gonna get all of those muscles, the lower back, the glutes and the hamstrings working in unison, which is very, very beneficial, but it also gets your heart rate up. And if you can move into quite heavy kettlebell swings, you've got to think like, I've got a 40 kilo kettlebell. If you're able to power that up, the amount of power you've got to fling that around, you're gonna develop good power and good strength in your posterior train, which will transfer over into other exercises. But like I said, it also gets your heart rate up. And another exercise that I do of it is the clean and press, which again, ends up being like a full body movement because you have to have the power to clean up here and the single arm power to be able to get up. At the minute, I've been able to do sort of singles, doubles with the 40 kilo, where I were, did start with a 32, so there is a, a strength increase there, and then that's transferring over to different things. Recently also got a sandbag. Yesterday I did 10 calories or a minute worth on the air bike, but 10 calories, then I'll do 10 kettlebell swings, and then 10 sandbag flips over the back because again, it's that full body power, it's that hip hinge. And again, if you if you build a strong hip hinge, strong glutes, strong lower back, strong hamstring, that's gonna transfer over into a lot of exercises and just in general make you more athletic. And sometimes I might do some box jumps as well, just to be able to get in that lower body power. But like I said, if you add them in, it just makes you feel athletic, it makes you feel like an athlete, which is a nice feeling sometimes. And like I said, it's a little bit different from my strength workout, but it's still a fairly minimalist style of training because it's very short and concise. And I'm not doing lots of different exercises to do different things it's what is going to be best for that job do that focus on that and then i'm done so let me give you some examples like i said if you're someone that's just doing calisthenics some very very simple ones you can go with is a push pull legs okay because if you do a push pull legs you're pretty much hitting every major muscle group in your body so if you're doing a calisthenics one that could be if you're a beginner that could be a row it could be a push up into maybe a squat or a lunge if you're more advanced it might go into a pull up into a dip into maybe if you've got mobility a pistol squat maybe some bulgarian split squats maybe some unilateral work just because for your own body weight a normal body weight squat might be too easy so you might have to start playing around with things that are a little bit more intense but you can then progress it a little bit further which i would still classify as a fairly minimalist program is if you say you did a pull up in a row maybe a push up and either a handstand or a pike push up a vertical pushing motion or a dip and then if you did a maybe a squat variation and then maybe a bridge variation to me, that would still be a very minimalist program, but it would allow you to cover all of your other bases. So some of the muscles that might get neglected in the pull-up if you're not doing it correctly or you're not doing chest to bar, i.e. the mid-back and maybe the rear delts, with the row, you get to cover those bases. Again, if you're doing a push-up and a vertical pushing, you're gonna be hitting that from a horizontal and a vertical. So again, that's good bases that you're covering, especially for some overhead strength. It's very beneficial and especially for some people the long head of the tricep really does get recruited when you do a lot of overhead work. Plus you'll end up getting your traps involved in there as well if you do a pike or a handstand. And again, the squat pretty much hits the whole entire leg. But if you get a squat, a lot of people, depending on their mobility, might not go down that low. So a lot of the emphasis might still be on the quads, especially if you're doing like assisted pistol squats where you're going quite slack coming down because you don't have the mobility and a lot of the main driver is going to be the quads. By adding a little bit of bridging work, you get to really um, activate the glutes and the hamstrings, so that's something I do recommend. If you're someone that is just doing weight training, you can't go far wrong with sort of like the big five or even the big three if you wanna be ultra minimalist and do sort of like a strongest five by five program, which sort of focuses on sort of like the bench, the squat and the deadlift, but I would recommend because with them, you're kind of neglecting the back, even though the, the deadlift does do it, you still wanna get some form of pulling. So I would add in a minimum of a sort of a bent over row and I would replace 
do the bench press with an overhead press, but a lot of people will do the overhead and the bench, the squat and the deadlift, and then a row. And if you wanna add in maybe a pull-up, so you've got sort of like six exercises, you're pretty much hitting it from every angle. If you wanna do a combination of the of all of them, which kind of, in a way, I kind of am doing, but I mainly do upper body for calisthenics and lower body with the weights, you can incorporate them and take them out and mix and match them. So for instance, if you wanna do, I don't know, maybe a deadlift or a squat for your legs, and maybe you wanna do an overhead press and a dip, and then for the other one, you might do a bent over row and a pull up. That would be a good mixture of the two. But guys, let me know what your minimalist program is if you're doing one. Why are you doing that form of training? What exercise you're doing? Why have you chosen those ones? Because the ones that I have chosen obviously are big compound exercises, but they're proven exercises. They're very common movements that we could or would replicate in everyday life. So for me, the reason the reason why I like the trap bar is because it's a loaded lift. Because the problem with calisthenics is you want to you you miss out on the idea of doing anything loaded, a loaded carry, a loaded lift because in essence, in everyday life, we are more likely to be picking up stuff, whether it's shopping, whether we're moving house, whether different things, If you, especially if you're a laborer, we're more likely to pick things up and move them as opposed to be somewhere where we're gonna pull our body up to then drop down and start doing push-ups. Even though they are key functional exercises, in the life that we live now, a loaded carry or a lift is something that would be very beneficial to us to just maintain that strength, to be able to handle life and to move things in life would be very handled to reduce the risk of injury for one, but just improve sort of our athletic ability and how we can handle life in general. So guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel to grow. If you want more content like this, make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get notified of whenever I upload. If you have any questions or you wanna create a discussion, please comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. And without the way guys, I will see you in the next video.